We have a special edition, the aftermath of the assassination attempt. Investigators are still trying to figure out why a gunman tried to assassinate former President Donald Trump. We all watched in horror. The FBI says 20-year-old Thomas Matthew Crooks is a lone gunman. Crooks fired from this rooftop that you will see soon with a clear line of sight, 200 yards away from the rally. Federal law enforcement officials say local law enforcement agencies were responsible for securing the rooftops. Now, witnesses we talk with from Pennsylvania who were at the rally say they are in still disbelief and shock about the attempt. Let's take a look. And joining us on the Factor on Sensor tonight, we have with us Aubrey McCoy and Sarah Westbrook, and they both were at the rally, the Trump rally this weekend, uh, Saturday when the unthinkable happened. We also have conservative radio talk show host Angela Box, a very familiar face here on the Factor on Sensor. So, Aubrey and Sarah, first of all, tell me where you guys were and what was it like to go through that? Yeah, so I was, we got there pretty late. We got there like around 4.35, so we weren't super close to the stage. Um, we were actually, we were close to the building where the one shooter, I say one shooter was. Um, we were probably, we were within, I could throw a ball and hit that building. <laughs> so we were to the left of the stage, um, off to the left a little bit again, pretty far back. Kind and of did you guys right hear the, the gunshot building. coming from the building that you were nearby? We did, yeah. Yeah, we could hear. It was four shots. Um, you could tell it was it was definitely from the building. Wow. Sarah, what was it like for you, and where were you on the fairgrounds? Um, I was on the outside. So I was, I was something inside me told me not to go in. I was there all day. I got there at 7.45 in the morning as a volunteer. And I was going to stay and watch, but I was hot and there was a lot of people. So I actually um, was back by the airplane hangars, which was right behind the building where the one shooter was. And so I watched it on the outside peripheral of the whole farm show grounds. So I could hear it. Um, I was watching it from a hangar where I was watching it on Fox News, but then the cable and all the internet all of a sudden went out at about 4.45. Trump was supposed to come on at five, and he didn't come on until six. And I was watching from behind the fence, and I heard the shots go off, and it was silent for a minute. And then everybody looked at each other about five seconds and started running and running for the exit. What were you feeling internally when you realized there was a shot fired, the president went down, the Secret Service rushed the stage, and and you were there in the midst of all of this. What did you feel? What were your emotions then? Well, I was panicking because I could I could hear everything. I, I but I couldn't see because I was back behind the fence, so I didn't have my glasses. So I couldn't see that far. But I heard the shots, and like everybody around us thought initially fireworks because it wasn't super loud where I was. But it took about five seconds to register. And I started panicking and shaking and uh, running toward, I didn't know if I wanted to run to my car and leave because I was already in the parking lot or if I should take shelter. So I was trying to decide in the heat of the moment, do I want to be trapped in a airplane hangar or do I want to get in my car and leave? And I got in my car and bolted before anyone even got to the gate to leave from the inside. And Aubrey, what was it like for you internally witnessing that and seeing the president go down, not knowing his condition until he got back up? Yeah, very similar to Sarah. I think the I was really concerned about how he was, honestly. Like I wanted before I left, I wanted to know how he was. And I think a lot of people felt that way because if mm -hmm. you see videos, like a lot of people did not move. Everyone was like is he good? Is he good? And then you kind of saw like the the fight and then everyone was like, all right, let's get out of here. But yeah, my first reaction, same as Sarah, like you could hear all this going on, but you couldn't, like you didn't know where the shooter was. You didn't know how many. You didn't know like, were they just going for President Trump? Were they trying to get all of us? Um, you know, the cops were telling you to lay down. So some people were laying down. Some people were running. Um, so we just, I was there with 
my boyfriend and some family members, and we all pretty much just ran. ran and out. are you guys, because I, I, Angela, I saw you go quote unquote when they said the one shooter. Are you guys satisf satisfied that everyone has been arrested or taken out that may have had a role? Do you think it was a lone shooter? What are you guys thinking? Angela, we'll begin with you now. Well, I mean, this is in 1963, and uh, we have free Twitter now. If we did not have free Twitter, the things you're seeing today would not be being seen. Uh, Elon Musk buying Twitter, I think, is going to be seen as one of those linchpins of history where it changed everything. Um, the, the story that the Secret Service, the Biden administration, the FBI, the CIA are trying to spin for the American people is that there's one guy and we got him. Not talking about the absolute um, impo impo improbability of this being a uh, not an inside job where a guy just so happens to be able to climb a, a rooftop, just so happens to be able to uh, get off all these miraculous shots where we have, you know, dozens if not hundreds of people in the crowd pointing to the roof, trying to get the attention of the Secret Service and then being ignored. We have Sarah... Um, who is a wit an ear witness on a police scanner of uh, them saying uh, the second shooter has been shot and has been killed. I mean, none of this passed the smell test. We have Democrats who for the last eight years have called Trump Hitler and called us Hitler and right-wing Nazis and right-wing extremists. And, and so I guess I would say if, if Trump really is Hitler, why aren't you happy today? I mean, look, none of this makes any sense. I think that Joe Biden saying that the that the FBI is on top of it should give uh, nobody uh, 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 comfort, considering these are the people that created the Russia collusion hoax.